win by the Copenhagen Wolves over Millennium, taking it all back to the beginning. What did you guys make out of pick and bans? Well, so the pick and ban for Copenhagen Wolves was a lineup which needed some items to really start becoming effective. We saw the same thing in the game, uh, especially the likes of Trundle, the likes of Yasuo. They need some items before they can really start team fighting well. And they kind of overcommitted with it. The very first dragon fight, they, they actually started the dragon themselves. Trundle at the point didn't even have his players to run king. He had just Cutlass, Double Dorns, and two daggers. That was it. So, he, so Youngbuck, he walked in, died like this. I mean, instant dead. And that was an issue for them because they kept starting these fights, they kept starting the dragons, they could never flank around because, again, they were the ones to start the dragons. That's why they lost the fights early on and why Millennium actually pulled ahead. You mentioned losing the fights, but I actually want to come back before that because Copenhagen Wolves, as we've seen in the Spring Split already, they are quite good at predicting the lane swaps and choosing the right ways to go. Well, so what happened at level one? Was uh, you want to take it? No, 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 go for it. <laughs> okay, so level one, we saw the scrying up again from, uh, from Kevin. Uh, they used it yesterday, Copenhagen Wolves as well. They have a, a very good coach or analyst who then could be helping them out predicting this thing here. So as soon as they saw the scrying up, they placed wards in the river so they could actually spot them uh, coming in and moving around. It's exactly what we saw because Millennium lined up at the, at the tribe bottom bush and they wanted to land a hook from Tyrion over the wall, but because there was a ward in the river, they spotted him, moved away from it, and nothing happened from it. So that's very good there, planning from Copenhagen Wolves and spotting the, and, and knowing the situation very fast. Yeah, it's something we've seen from before, and it also led to the, the, a fancy bit of 4-0 play that actually mm -hmm. led them to great advantage. Now, I can tell you De Fischer was fairly passionate about this, so I'm going to let him go for this one, because he was getting very excited about this upstairs. Right, so we actually had the same situation yesterday, where Rocket played against Millennium. Exactly the same thing. Four members from Copenhagen Wolves this time, they were in the bottom lane, they took the tower. Now, Creaton was in the top lane together with Jerry. And what happens here is, Copenhagen Wolves decide to teleport Youngberg up to the top lane, because now they force Millennium to decide. Do we keep Jerry here to push down the tower, two members against the Trundle defending? Or do we recall our support to the bottom lane so he can defend the next tower? If they kept him up there, they could have taken the tower, or they would have lost the second tower, because there were still three members from Copenhagen Wolves pushing. What they did, they recalled, defended the tower, and instead Youngbok and Airworks, they picked up first blood on Creaton up in the top lane, defended the tower for quite a long time, got some farm on Youngbok. So it's a very smart play, because Copenhagen Wolves, they took, I wouldn't even say the chance, they decided to do this move here, and then they put Millennium in a situation where they quickly need to decide, do we push the tower, give up another one, do we just recall, what do we do here? What do we make of the rest of the game then? Because they had an early lead, Copenhagen Wolves, but Millennium were able to fight back. Yeah, Millennium, uh, actually, as, as, as Deficio pointed out, Copenhagen Wolves needed time to build up. They, they got caught out in one of the fights, they tried to go for it, it wasn't enough. We actually do have the replay on the screen as well, which was the Millennium fight, which really went very well for them. I mean, yeah, if we just pull it up on the screen, the fight itself, the key thing, so we actually do the, the Dragon one now, which was one of the, the points you talked about earlier, where Copenhagen Wolves, they need to flank around with Evelyn to start the fights. And also they need items to build up. This is very early in the game. If you notice Kauta down in the bottom of your screen on the left side, Blaze Rune King and a Ruby Crystal and then Dawn's Blades. That's it, he's not tanky at all. So if you roll the clip now, we see how when the fight actually starts, Copenhagen Wolves aren't strong enough with that come to fight here. And as soon as this, notice Kotnex, he's beautiful engaged onto Wulad. As soon as the AD carry is gone, that is it. Airwalks, he won't be able to flank. He's forced out of the fight. Wulad now here gets kicked into the team. This of course is their main point. He goes down very, very fast, and even though Kaltart lands a beautiful Naga of ultimate here, he doesn't have the damage yet, he doesn't have the infinity edge yet, and the rest of his team are just too squishy and too weak, so they lose the fight and they were in a bad position from the start. But then later in the game, obviously, when they have built up their items and their strength, it is very easy for the Copenhagen Wolves to do good in team fights, and we actually have an example of that as well. You can pull that replay up on the screen. Yeah, so second replay, of course, is the big turning point in the game here for Copenhagen Wolves where they pick up the ace. Airwalks, he moved the entire way around here. Normally, if you want to push down on a lane against Evelyn, you put some pink walls behind you or on the side of you so you can try and spot her flanking around. Millennium, they didn't do this this time. So Airwalks, he could just walk the entire route around them and then if you roll the clip. Notice also how summoners on the right side here from Millennium are down. Kerb has no flash. His hourglass isn't completed yet, so he's an easy target. And he's the best thing Copenhagen Wolves do. Copenhagen Wolves do. They split up the damage. They know Kerb is dead already just from Evelyn going on to him and the rest of the team helping. So Kaltart and Woolight, they actually go straight towards Creaton, knock him up and also kill him instantly. So both carries die as soon as the fight starts and of course there's nothing then 
Millennium can do. And tanky graves, maybe Wallite putting a, very a case manly. in why you're up in picking graves are quite a lot there, but he went very manly, as you mentioned. He went deep for that kill. Dashed right into them and just destroyed people. Man mode, absolutely. And a win for the Copenhagen Wolves. Now, uh, it's always nice to listen to you guys, but we also want to listen to you guys at home. And at the start of the show, we asked you to head over on Twitter and tell us which European LCS team will surprise us the most this split and why. And here are some of the answers you've been sharing with us. The first one is from at Mr. Kayo. Alliance, of course, they were good without a coach, and now they have two. Monty would be proud. I mean, it's a good point, because it's what they need. They need to fix the, the map movements, the rotations, because they are great individual players. All of them are great to have on your fantasy team. I myself got a few of them. Thank you very much for yesterday's points. They are perfect players to have individually. So as long as they can rotate around the map, they could be one of the top teams, or will be one of the top teams. And we'll see them in action in just a second versus the super hot crew. The second tweet is from at Gigi Jimbo. I don't know. One, I think the underdog team Copenhagen Wolves will perform very well this split because of their new underrated lineup with Airwax and Woolite, and we just saw it. Yeah, absolutely. We just saw Woolite. Woolite has actually performed very well. Copenhagen Wolves have pulled out their third great AD carry. Woolite, of course, we saw in the Challenger scene. They had Reckless originally, then they had uh, Forgiven, of course, in there, and now they pulled out Woolite, who seems to have fitted very well into this team. He's been performing brilliantly. Of course, Airwax alongside him seems to have fitted in well. We just heard from Kautar herself, he's like, he's like, well, there's a lot of work to go, but it's looking good. They just took down Millennium, who were 2-0 yesterday. Absolutely great eye for talent there at the Wolves. This third one is from at underscore X Soul Reaper. I think Millennium will be the team to surprise us the most. Since Cottonex joined the team, they have been on a rampage. They still did good in this game, and of course, they were 2-0 yesterday, so not to take anything away from them. No, of course not. It would have been perfect before the game to say 2-0 and mm. everything. Still, it's a very strong start. They look a lot stronger than the last split here. Cotton X has been a great addition, especially to, it seems to be the shot calling, and I recall them telling me he, he's actually making a lot of calls when it comes to especially team fights, and it's one of the things where Millennium have been a lot stronger now in this split. So I'm really enjoying watching Cotton X play, and I think Millennium, again, as long as they keep practicing, as long as, as, long as they keep playing solo queue, they can remain a, a very strong team. We should also point out Kevin on that team. You know, he was solid. Oh, yeah. He's been solid player for a very long time, and now actually his team is starting to perform. We saw him there, he was shining through, well, 7 3 10 or yeah. something at one point. He is pretty much one of the top laners in Europe right now. Absolutely. Well, thank you guys for those responses. And remember that you can always chat with us and your fellow LCS fans at LOL Esports by using that hashtag LCS. It's time to head into our next match, so let's send things over to Joe and